If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this question is to draw a picture of the rod as it's trying to be moved around this corner. Notice that in order to turn the corner, we have to make the rod just barely touch this corner of the corridor right here. Now, it's important to note in this problem that the length of the longest pipe that can be carried horizontally around the corner without getting stuck is actually the length of the shortest line segment that can be placed so that its ends touch the corridor walls and some point on the line segment is touching the corner, which would be this point right here. So in essence, this question is actually asking us to find the shortest line segment. And so we're going to need to come up with an expression for the length of this line segment in order to find that minimum line segment length. And to do that, let's define an angle theta here. And then we'll notice that since this segment is parallel to this segment here, this angle also would be theta. We can notice then that we have two right triangles. This angle right here is a right angle. And if we extend a segment downward, we have another right angle here. And so because we have two right triangles, we can mark the hypotenuses of those right triangles as H1 and H2. Now looking at this first triangle, we can see that the cosine of the angle would be the adjacent side, which is three meters divided by the hypotenuse H1. Looking at the second right triangle, we have the sine of that angle theta equaling the opposite side, which is also three meters divided by the hypotenuse. Now both of these equations can be solved for their respective hypotenuses. And so here are those equations solved for the hypotenuses. We note that the total length of the rod would simply be the sum of those two hypotenuses. So we can say that the length as a function of the angle would equal h1, which was the three over cosine theta, plus h2, which is three over sine theta. We next want to note the domain of this function right here we notice that theta has to be greater than zero degrees because if it were zero degrees, then this line segment that represents the rod would actually be laying horizontally in this fashion and it would be infinitely long because it would extend forever down the corridor to the right. At the same time, theta has to be less than 90 degrees because if it were 90 degrees, then the rod would be lying vertically in this fashion and once again, it would be extending infinitely down the corridor in a downward fashion. So in other words, the length of the rod tends to infinity when the angle approaches zero degrees, and the length of the rod also tends to infinity when the angle approaches 90 degrees. And that's a key idea that we'll refer back to in just a moment. Now, we are looking for the minimum of this function, and to do that, we're going to have to calculate the derivative. But before doing that, it might be helpful to first bring the cosine to the numerator as well as the sine to the numerator. And of course, when we do that, the exponents become negative. Now we're prepared to calculate the derivative. And to do that, we can basically use a chain rule. So we'll pull the exponent down to multiply by the coefficient. So we have negative three. We recopy the inside function, subtract one from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of cosine of theta is going to be negative sine of theta. The negative sign can be carried out to the front to make the overall quantity positive. We then apply the chain rule one more time to get minus three times the inside function, subtract one from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which would be cosine of theta. Now it's going to be convenient to move the cosine theta to the negative two down to the denominator, as well as the sine of theta to the negative two so that we can make those exponents positive. Now, of course, in order to minimize this function, we have to set it equal to zero. Why don't we add this term over to the right hand side we have a factor of three on the left and right hand side, so we can divide both sides by three. We will then cross multiply so that we have sine cubed of theta equaling the cosine cubed of theta. We'll divide both sides by cosine cubed. And then we'll use the identity that sine cubed over cos cubed is tan cubed. We could then cube root both sides so that the tangent of theta is equal to one. And then when we take the arctan, we can see that theta is equal to 45 degrees, which falls neatly right in the middle of our domain. Now, graphically, if we plotted the length as a function of theta, we said that when the angle approaches zero degrees, the length goes to infinity. So the function would go upwards. 
And also when theta approaches 90 degrees, which we can mark on the x-axis right here, the length tends to infinity. That means that at this critical number, where theta is 45 degrees, we indeed have a minimum value of the function. We must have a minimum value because on the other sides, the length is approaching infinity. So this must be the minimum. Now, theta is 45 degrees, but we need to find the actual length. So we just simply go back to the length function we developed earlier. So here is that function and we'll go ahead and plug in 45 degrees. Hopefully we remember that the cosine as well as the sine of 45 degrees is root two over two. So we can fill those in. Algebraically, these twos will be moved to the numerator and multiplied by three. So we'll get six over root two plus six over root two. That's gonna give us 12 over root two. If we rationalize the denominator, we get 12 root two over two, which of course simplifies to six root two. So this is the length that will allow the rod to be moved around the corner of this corridor. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.